back again. All right, so if we're looking again for the total distance traveled, guys, we're looking for when this particle, you know, let's talk about going, um, we're talking about when this particle is moving to the right as well as moving to the left and then moving back to the right. So whenever it changes position, we're looking for, like, what is that total distance? So we're looking for the absolute value of all these directions. But we got to be careful because obviously you can run four miles and run four miles back and your displacement is zero, but you traveled eight miles. So that's what we're looking for is that um, total distance traveled, so the absolute value of the distance traveled without really dealing with the direction. So what we want to do is find all the points where, again, between 0 and 4 seconds that this um, particle is changing the directions. So to do that, we know that a particle is changing directions when the velocity changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So the first thing we want to do is find the velocity function, which is the prime of the position function, which in this case is going to be 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Then we want to set, to find out where it's going to be changing um, from positive to negative, we want to set this equal to 0 and basically say, you know, where is it going to be below and above to find where those changes are. I'll factor out a 3 here. So I get t squared minus 4t plus 3. Divide out the 3, and then I can factor this out. What two numbers multiply to give me 3? So that's going to be t uh, minus 3 times t plus 3. So that's 1. So at t equals 1 and t equals, sorry, what am I doing? That's negative 3, right? At t equals 1 and at t equals 3, the particle is potentially changing direction, right? And obviously, we could justify that it's changing direction by actually plugging in a test point, right? Can we plug in like between 0 is the initial point? So if we draw our like kind of number line here. So here we have s of 0, which is like the beginning. Here we have s of 4, which is the end. Then we have s of 1, and we have s of 3. Right? And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, we could plug in points like s of 1 half to determine if the velocity is positive or negative. Plug in you know, s of 2 to determine if it's positive or negative and determine like s of 3.5, determine if it's positive or negative. And that's just to verify if it's going to be you know, changing direction at those points. Um, and to look at it, actually, that's going to be positive and to negative, and then back over to positive if you were to go ahead and plug those in. But in the reality, the main important thing we, we want to do is find the change. How far did it change from s of 1 to 0? It doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative in this case. We've got to find the distance traveled here. So we're going to take the absolute value of s of 1 minus s of 0. That is showing the displacement from 0 to 1. Does that make sense to everyone? And then we're going to add that to the absolute value of the displacement from 0 to 3 to 0 to 1. And then we're going to add that to displacement from s of 4 to s of 3. Does everybody see what I at least wrote in there? Does that make sense? Because if that makes sense, then the only way that you would have got something wrong is if you just made some arithmetic errors. Because from here, this is the main idea, is understanding that even though it's changing direction, you're finding this, this distance plus this distance plus this, this distance by finding the displacement using subtraction and then the absolute value taking away the direction. Because we don't really care about the direction. We don't care if you go four miles this way and four miles that way. You still traveled eight miles. So that's what the absolute value helps us to be able to calculate with that. But is everybody OK with this? So now, basically, what we need to do is figure out what all these values are. So s of 0, just plug x of 0 in, that's going to be 5. s of 1, that's going to equal, I'm going to do a little bit of math, a little bit more in my head. So 1 minus 6 plus 9 plus 5, which equals 9. s of 3 equals 27 uh, minus 54 plus 27 plus 5, which equals 5. And then we got to do s of 4. So 4 cubed is going to be 64. 4 squared is 16. Um, 4 squared is 16. 16 times 6 is going to be 96. 
minus 96. Uh, 4 times 3 is positive 36. And then plus 5. Check my math in my head, make sure I'm doing this uh, correctly, because if I got S of 4, should equal 9. Okay, and now to find the total distance traveled is basically just going to be the absolute value of S of 1, which is 9, minus 5, plus absolute value of S of 3, which is 5, minus S of 1, which is 9, plus absolute value of S of 4, which is 9, minus S of 3, which is 5. And that is 12 feet. Yes, no, maybe so.